from Turner Broadcasting System. This is Headline News. If you're over 50, it pays to join the people of AARP. Your experience and what makes me succeed. You're a helping hand and a friend indeed. Here's to the people of AARP. You do so much for me. Here's to the people of AARP. Some of the most important jobs in America belong to AARP members, the American Association of Retired Persons. But you don't have to be retired to enjoy our benefits. If you're over 50, you can call now and join. A $5 annual membership gives you a strong voice government hears, free information programs, help with taxes, savings on hotels, car rentals, health insurance, and a great magazine and news bulletin. Here's to the people of AARP. You do so much for me. Call now for your membership kit. Headline News, I'm Lynn Russell. An interception over the Mediterranean. U.S. officials say two Libyan jet fighters swept past an American surveillance plane yesterday but did not threaten to shoot it down. Ralph Begleiter has more. The Pentagon says an American reconnaissance plane was approached briefly over the Gulf of Sidra yesterday by a couple of Libyan fighters, but the Libyan planes disappeared even before two American fighters could get there from the aircraft carrier Coral Sea. Similar episodes have occurred in the past because the U.S. does not recognize Libya's claim of the entire Gulf of Sidra as its territorial water. In 1981, the U.S. shot down two Libyan planes over the Gulf. In the Mediterranean, the U.S. and Libya's major military backer, the Soviet Union, are keeping an eye on one another's movements, though officials insist there is no superpower confrontation at hand. The Soviets, with 26 ships in the Mediterranean, are also said to be operating intelligence-gathering planes in the area. A Soviet submarine tender similar to this one is reported to be docked at Tripoli, serving as an intelligence center for Libya. Uh, we have to assume this is an integrated effort to... Uh, obtain detailed information about our fleet operations and provide it to the Libyans. Last month, the Soviets supplied Libya with new surface-to-air missiles capable of hitting targets 150 miles off Libya's coast, including the area where the U.S. reconnaissance plane was flying. For its part, the U.S. is moving a second aircraft carrier, the Saratoga, to join the Coral Sea in the eastern Mediterranean. Administration officials do not consider either the Libyan approach to the American reconnaissance plane or the superpower naval movements in the Mediterranean to be threatening. But the face-off makes it clear the ingredients for a military confrontation in the Mediterranean are there. Case closed. That's the word from the United States on Iran's interception of an American ship. The State Department says that seizure and eight others yesterday were legal. Iran says it will continue searching ships it believes are carrying military hardware to Iraq. Columbia's mission is being cut short today. NASA informed the shuttle's astronauts they'll come home Thursday instead of Friday. Tom Mintier has the latest. NASA officials decided to shorten the Columbia mission to lengthen their chances of keeping on schedule for the rest of the year. Yes, sir, the decision has just been made to bring it back one day early, that is Thursday. Moving the landing to Thursday instead of Friday also will ensure two consecutive days of good weather. Forecasters predict less than perfect conditions for a Saturday landing if required. Late Tuesday afternoon, Mission Control told the Columbia crew that they were coming home early. Columbia may go into the record books as one of NASA's most problem-plagued missions, following the launch delays with problems in space. Out-of-order signs may have been hanging all over the shuttle. Two materials processing units failed, a lid on an astronomical sensor stuck open, and several heat-resistant tiles broke off during the trip to space. The biggest disappointment, though, occurred when the shuttle crew attempted to photograph Halley's Comet. A camera device that multiplies by 100,000 times the brightness of the comet still isn't working. Astronaut George Nelson took it apart and made adjustments, but they didn't make much difference. Crew member Steve Hawley had better luck with a student experiment to make paper in space. The student from Appleton, Wisconsin, thinks the near-zero gravity will help paper fibers fall into just the right patterns. The distribution of fibers will become more uniform due to the lack of gravity. 
Astronaut Franklin Chang Diaz spent most of Tuesday putting together his version of a home movie on his trip to space. Narrating in Spanish, he provided a guided tour of the shuttle and was beamed down to Latin America. Chang Diaz and his six other crew members will spend just two more nights in those space sleeping bags. Landing at the Kennedy Space Center is set for Thursday morning at 8.28 a.m. Eastern Time. Tom Mintier, Headline News. Today, President Reagan and Secretary of State Schultz welcomed Ecuador's President Cordero for meetings and a state dinner. The display of administration support for democracy in Latin America continues tomorrow when Honduras President visits Washington. And as the war in Nicaragua drags on, the possibility of more American aid to the Sandinista rebels is getting strong reaction from Capitol Hill. Charles Bierbauer has details. President Reagan is likely to ask Congress for $30 million or more in renewed covert military aid for the Contras. A senior administration official expects the president's decision to come soon, since the $27 million in humanitarian aid approved by Congress last year expires at the end of March. At a ceremony welcoming Ecuadorian President Febres Cordero, President Reagan lashed out at Nicaragua's Sandinista government. It should surprise no one that the rifles used to take over a court building and murder judges in a democratic nation can be traced to a country controlled by those who don't believe in freedom, human rights, or democracy. The president referred to the siege last year in Colombia, triggered by the terrorist organization M-19. Administration officials say they have proof that weapons used by the terrorists came from the Sandinistas. Officials here say, too, that the M-19 link, the increased Cuban military activity in Nicaragua, and the Sandinista suppression of church, press, and human rights have changed the mood in Congress. But one member of the House Intelligence Committee says it's too soon to make that assessment. Congress will not support, in my opinion, uh, giving aircraft to uh, military offensive aircraft to the Contras. They won't support giving tanks. I mean, we have to define the level of military assistance. Uh, we have to, to question and I think uh, have answers as to exactly what the objectives of the Contra are. Officials here at the White House say the Contras are in difficult straits even though their forces may have grown. And the National Security Council is reportedly warning the president that the Contra effort cannot be effective much longer without U.S. military aid. Award-winning actress Donna Reed is dead. She died today in Beverly Hills at the age of 64 of pancreatic cancer. It was diagnosed last month while she was hospitalized for bleeding ulcers. Reed is probably best remembered as Mrs. Stone, the wife and mother of two on The Donna Reed Show. But before that, she played a prostitute in the movie From Here to Eternity. Terrible way you acted. Maybe I was jealous. You're a funny one. What do you, what do you things want, to tease a man to death? Now, what do you think Mrs. Kipper hires us for? She pays us to be nice to all the boys. They're all alike. Is it so important? It is important. Would and that role like brought the Supporting like Actress Academy Award. Thank you. Oh, it was a long walk. I didn't think I was going to make it. Well, I'm, I'm very proud and I'm very grateful, especially to Columbia Pictures. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience from here to eternity. But I think even more wonderful is from eternity to here. Thank you. Thank you. Apples, almonds, raisins. No name. Well, of course it's fruit and uh... Post Fruit and Fiber presents New Harvest Medley, another delicious way to forget the fiber. Now 20% more fiber with a harvest of sweet diced apples, crunchy almonds, and raisins. So all you remember is New Fruit and What's in a name? Post Fruit and Fiber <laughs> Harvest Medley cereal. Tastes so good you forget the fiber. It's a funny kind of hunger that everybody knows. Mmm, Hostess Twinkies Cakes. Gotta have a Hostess, only Hostess has it, gotta have it right now. Hostess Twinkies Cakes, cupcakes, real fruit pies. Only Hostess has it, gotta have a Hostess now. 
And now something new from Hostess. A free half gallon of milk when you buy four specially marked Hostess family packs. Free milk and Hostess Twinkies cakes. Free milk and cupcakes. Free milk and Susie Q's. Details on specially marked packages. Ooh, Hostess has it. Gotta have a Hostess now. Our Congress has just approved four and a half billion dollars for Israel. A gift of four and a half billion of your tax dollars, and it swept through Congress without debate. Why? How can Israel get this huge handout when the Senate voted to cut even Social Security? The startling answer can be found in a new book, They Dare to Speak Out, by Paul Findlay, a 22-year veteran in Congress. His book documents how Israel's powerful lobby is able to stifle free speech, control our Congress, and even dictate our foreign policy. The Washington Post calls They Dare to Speak Out straightforward and valid, but it's hard to find in bookstores. Don't miss it. Send for this shocking and fascinating book on Israel's lobby. Just call 1-800-852-5000, toll free. Use Master Charge, Visa, or American Express. They, they dare, dare to speak out. out. 1695 plus shipping. Call 1-800-852-5000. Order yours, yours today. today. Call 1-800-852-5000. Prompt service. Call 1-800-852-5000. <laughs> A special crime commission is urging President Reagan to develop a nationwide scheme to rid the marketplace of mobsters. In a report released today, the commission says organized crime has used labor unions to seize legitimate businesses. The study named four key unions. It calls for a new strategy to bankrupt individual crime figures. This report recognizes that in the above world, in the world of business, and in the world of labor unions, that the harm caused by organized crime essentially is a violation of rights. The Commission's crime study is the first comprehensive survey its kind of its kind in nearly three decades. AIDS has created two epidemics in the United States. One is the disease itself, which has been predicted to afflict nearly 15,000 people this year. The other epidemic is fear. Tony Clark reports. At San Francisco's AIDS hotline, volunteers work to calm fears from callers, worried that they may catch the disease. In New York, and in London, anywhere there's a hotline, the calls and concerns are much the same. We had one um, gentleman who called that someone in their office had been diagnosed, and the entire office was freaked out because they'd used the same water fountain. And the man put me on a speakerphone so I could address the entire office because he said nobody in the office had slept for two days. They were so so panicky could they get it from the water fountain even on college campuses there are fears things like if i eat next to a gay student will i get aids can i use the same towel if my suite mate's gay can i take a shower in the shower psychologist stacy brune tries to allay student concerns she says the best treatment for this epidemic of fear is information we'll be very candid in saying no you can't you know research has shown evidence has shown that uh, that it's very difficult, if not impossible, to catch AIDS by shaking hands with someone, that it's a sexually transmitted disease. But education is a slow process, and in Texas, with homosexuality outlawed and a proposal to quarantine certain AIDS patients, gays may go back into hiding. Homophobia and, and the, the plight of gay people and the discrimination, those have all been around for a long time. and for. AIDS is making it worse, and I think we, we will face some very real problems of people going underground, going back into the closet. And if that happens, Nelson says, containing the AIDS epidemic will be that much harder. Tony Clark, Headline News, Dallas. A new test as simple as a pinprick could save thousands of lives. Doctor will soon be able to check your cholesterol count in a matter of minutes, and if it's high, he'll tell you how to treat it right on the spot. High cholesterol is known to cause thousands of strokes and heart attacks every year. Often it goes undetected and untreated. The cruise ship industry is under close scrutiny these days as the Public Health Service continues to find violations in sanitation standards. Al Sunshine has more. Miami Scandinavian Sun was one of 29 cruise ships to fail a sanitation inspection by the U.S. Public Health Service last year. Company spokesmen say it failed on a minor technicality which has been corrected, and they look forward to its next evaluation. The U.S. Public Health Service reports that an increasing number of cruise ships are failing federal guidelines concerning water quality, refrigeration, food preparation, and general cleanliness. 
Public health officials say their inspections are aimed at stopping shipboard cases of food poisoning, which had been a major problem in the early 1970s. Over 70 percent of the nation's cruise ships did pass tightened sanitation guidelines in 1984. But public health officials say in 1985, fewer ships got passing grades. It has gone down somewhat in the uh, past uh, eight or ten months. Uh, it's gone down to about a 60% uh, or so pass rate, uh, which, is, uh, which is a little bit less than it was a year ago. Unlike a restaurant that fails its health inspection, it's rare for the public health service to close down a cruise ship. To guarantee that tourists are cruising on a safe, clean vessel, public health officials say, just ask your travel agent or the public health service for the ship's last sanitation inspection. If uh, someone is concerned and, uh, and they want to know if a ship has passed an inspection, uh, they can uh, contact our office and we'll certainly let them know if the ship has passed the inspection or, or if it's failed the inspection. The majority of cruise ships sailing out of American ports are still meeting federal health guidelines. Inspectors say it may take another six months before they learn if the cruise industry is still sailing on a healthy course. And near Miami, one of the richest excavation sites in North America, archaeologists have found human remains in a sinkhole dating back 10,000 years. Katrina Daniels reports. Here, the home of modern South Dade man. And here, a few hundred feet across the way, the home of ancient Paleo-Indians. It is a collapsed limestone cave 16 feet deep, a subterranean condo of sorts, whose tenants, animal and human, lived here more than 10,000 years ago. Discovered accidentally by trespassers in 1979, Dade County archaeologists have spent four months digging in what they say may be the most important find in the eastern United States. Well, it's certainly one of the earliest discoveries of man in association with extinct animals. 10,000 years ago, uh, we just didn't have any idea that something like that was here. It'll be the first time that we can see scientifically the relationship between the two things, the fact that man was hunting some of those animals and eating them. Because they've been buried and preserved in limestone for so many years, the human and animal bones and artifacts were easy to identify. Well, we found a large number of artifacts made out of stone and bone. We found some human remains and quite a number of bones from extinct animals like the bison and the horse and the taper. The painstaking and delicate work will continue here for at least the next six months. Experts believe by then they'll know more about the secrets of the Paleo-Indians that were here long before the condos of Kendall. Stay tuned. The news continues. Feet, bopping feet, sweet feet, street feet. No matter how you treat your feet, Dr. Scholl's makes you feel like dancing with easy treatments that cushion calluses, remove and relieve corns, protect tender spots for all kinds of feet. Down to earth feet, out of this world feet. Dr. Scholl's has all kinds of comfort for all kinds of feet, right here. Dr. Scholl's makes you feel like dancing. Oh, looks like you also oiled your shirt, too. Come on, Miss Mechanic. You're going to use ALL? ALL can fix all kinds of stains. How's it work? All goes straight to the stain to lift it away and get everything clean. It's all clean! <laughs> Another squeak. I'll fix it. <laughs> lift stains away with concentrated ALL. This is Headline News, Missing Children Report. Six-year-old Michael Mayfield has been missing since January 10, 1985. Michael was last seen walking home from school in Houston, Texas. He has black hair and black eyes. At the time of disappearance, he was four feet tall and weighed 80 pounds. If you have any information about this child, please call the National Center for Missing Children, 1-800-843-LOST. Take two every day at noon Eastern for the fun of it. I love that story. <laughs> With the pointers and the people. Take two takes you where you want to go. 
with the folks you want to know. Take two. <laughs> Dave loves this stuff. How can you not have fun? Forty-nine minutes after the hour, time to check headline sports. This is Tom Steiner, headline sports. The 80th annual NCAA convention in New Orleans ended a day early. Unlike last year's convention, NCAA schools overwhelmingly approved a comprehensive drug testing program for all postseason sports, including championships and bowl games. Athletes who test positive on a long list of street drugs, as well as performance-enhancing substances, will lose their eligibility for a minimum of 90 days. And coaches who have knowledge of drug use but don't report it will also be subject to penalties. Tito Horford still looking for a place to play basketball. He was dismissed at LSU then was denied to play for Houston. While Tuesday, the Star Center was told the same thing. Sorry, but thanks by Kentucky coach Eddie Sutton. Out of the NFL, the Philadelphia Eagles say Chicago Bears defensive coordinator Buddy Ryan is in the running for the team's coaching vacancy. They plan on talking with Ryan after the Super Bowl. According to a Philly newspaper, Miami Dolphins assistant David Shula is still the Eagles' top choice to replace fired Marion Campbell. Valentine's Day came exactly a month early for one NBA team. The Los Angeles Clippers picked up veteran guard Darnell Valentine from the Portland Trailblazers in exchange for a first-round draft pick. Bob McAdoo is back in the league. The three-time scoring champion cut by the Lakers this season signed a two-year contract with the Philadelphia 76ers. Tennis, the Masters Championships in New York. Third seed Matt Wielander won his opening round match 6-3, 6-4 over Scott Davis. In a later match, Johan Creek also advanced to the quarterfinals with a three-set win over Australian Open champion Stefan Edberg. The scores 6-2, 4-6, and 6-2. Fourth-seeded Jimmy Connors has withdrawn from the tournament because of the flu. He'll be replaced by Andres Gomez. Tom Steiner, Headline Sports. I'm Chuck Roberts, and here's Who's News. There's a Herb in Louisiana who thinks he's the Herb Burger King is looking for. He's been in the burger business 31 years now. Herb may not have ever tried a Burger King burger, but he loves the attention he's getting from Burger King commercials. It is, man, I've had a, a tremendous response. There's been people everywhere said, every time I see that commercial, boy, I have to think about her. You may remember these two from Saturday Night Live. The comedy team of Franken and Davis was a big hit in the late 70s. Now they've been brought back as producers to help lift the show's sagging ratings, and they're determined to do it. I made the solemn vow that until I hope so. we have a 57 share, we will not eat solid food. I'm Chuck Roberts, Headline News. In the headlines, actress Donna Reed, who won an Oscar portraying a prostitute in From Here to Eternity, died at her home today from complications of cancer. The crew aboard the space shuttle Columbia will be coming home a day early. NASA officials say they want more time to prepare the shuttle for its next flight. And retail sales posted a 1.9% increase last month. That's the biggest gain since September. A rebound in the demand for cars helped boost the figure. With the top stories, I'm Lori Butterfield. We'll have more news after this. First came the pocket watch, then the pocket radio, then even a pocket camera. But who would have ever thought of a pocket TV? Casio, of course. Yes, it's the, the pocket, pocket TV by Casio. Another outstanding value from Urban General. This TV is smaller, lighter, sharper, and brighter. Until now, watching TV outdoors meant battling the sun. But now the more sun, the better. The unique liquid crystal solar projection screen actually soaks up the sun for a brighter, sharper picture. Excellent reception through this combination earphone antenna. Channels lock in automatically with Pocket TV's auto tuning. Operates on two AA batteries. A crisp, clear black and white picture from a name you know and trust. Complete for only $99.95. Order now and never miss another program. Here's how to order. Casio.
Use your credit card for rush delivery by calling 1-800-533-1400. That's 1-800-533-1400. Or send check or money order for $99.95 plus $5 shipping and handling to Casio Pocket TV. P.O. Box 8207, Atlanta, Georgia, 30306. Dollars and cents, so your teenager has hit you up for a bigger allowance. You're not alone. Teens spent $65 billion last year, making them a prime target for advertisers. Eugenia Halsey has more. When U.S. teenagers spend, they spend on performers like Bruce Springsteen and on... Balls, records, junk food, ice cream. It's enough to make any parent scream. I'm sure the parents are complaining. <laughs> but teens are also spending more than half of their dollars on household items, such as groceries and gas, as they take on the responsibility of doing family chores. More and more teenagers seem to be taking a responsible role in the family purchase decisions the most obvious being grocery shopping. Grady Hauser works for Teenage Research Unlimited. His firm conducts surveys every six months for advertisers and retailers, and he says the advertisers increasingly are aiming their sales pitch at teenagers. To put together the survey, the company sent 5,000 questionnaires to teenagers and used 1,600 responses, half of them from boys, half from girls. The dollar figures were obtained by asking teenagers how much they spent in the week before the questionnaires were sent out. The questionnaires revealed another trend, a decline in traditional teenage dating, which Hauser says may be explained by an increase in the popularity of videotapes. Teens are renting tapes and watching them in groups. You like to be with a lot more people because, ugh, guys, when you're alone with them, it's, it's usually really boring. Apparently also boring these days are designer jeans. I don't wear designer jeans, no, I don't think anybody does anymore. The survey found that teenage girls nowadays favor a looser hodgepodge collection of costumes like those worn by Madonna. Eugenia Halsey, Headline News, Chicago. Tomorrow's weather showers from Utah, south to New Mexico, east into Texas. Mostly sunny skies from the central plains to the east coast. High winds in northern Maine and on the eastern slopes of the Rockies. It's always enlightening for a teacher to see students learn, but when they accomplish what appears to be impossible, the results are positively uplifting. Mark Dalmage reports. It all started quite by accident a little more than three years ago. Masahiro Kodaka, a high school physical education teacher and weightlifter, was practicing for the Asian Games competition at the Hyogo Prefectural School for the Blind. Inevitably, some of the youngsters wanted to know what was going on, and some even thought they'd like to try it. Masahiro Kodaka is one of those teachers who wants to share and he found a way. Weightlifting, pumping iron, demands great mental as well as physical concentration. The blind have an initial disadvantage because they cannot visualize the process. Masahiro carefully, patiently, taught them first with light bamboo sticks. When he lifted, they were allowed to touch and feel the muscles of his body. The visualizing problem soon disappeared and the students found their world expanding. The tough grinding practice sessions with other students has formed close friendships that only the athlete can know. One youngster says he really started the program because he was skinny and others made fun of him. They don't anymore. Masahiro, who won a bronze medal in the Los Angeles Olympic Games, has put together one of the top weightlifting teams in the region. The students say he's more like a friend or a brother to them than a teacher. Rare praise for the usual stern, no-nonsense approach normally found in Japanese teachers. His patience, his love of the sport, and the students he works with all come together at the gym on competition day. And that's our report. Thank you for joining us. I'm Lynn Russell. Around the world in 30 minutes, this is Headline News. Wednesday, in the Old West, they lived by unwritten laws. One of them was murder begets murder. The Sacketts are out to break the cycle of killing. Killing don't mix well with a man's supper. Sam Elliott and Tom Selleck in Louis L'Amour's classic novel, 
the sackets. 8.05 Eastern on Superstation WTBS, Wednesday night. From Turner Broadcasting System, this is Headline News. The unsold air.